Hi, everybody. Um, remember back when, if, well, if you watch my Instagram stories, anyway, I vlogged a little bit about the fact that um, the S7 that I had was broken. And I figured I'd just keep you along for the journey for me trying to get it fixed with Bell. Oh, uh, you know. Figured if it's a good experience, let's share it. Why not give credit where credit is due? There's too much negativity in this world. And if it turns out to be, you know, a bad story, well, we'll just tell the truth and the facts, you know, what happened. Um, I'm happy to report it's all over and done with. And it was excellent. Very, very good. Um, unfortunately, that account, you know, no longer is there. The account holder made the decision that, you no. Know, we needed to split, which is okay. I agreed I should pay for my own phone. But I still think I want to share this because, again, there's so much negativity out there. And that goes for every single telecommunication company. Everybody, there's always someone that's mad about something. So for once, let's share good stuff. So here's my notes. Or whatever they now. On the 20th of May. So this has been happening since the 20th of May, and today we are the 13th of June. So I, I got the phone this morning. So from the 20th of May to the 13th of June, everything got fixed. Here's how the phone came back. Uh, I looked good. So the original problem that I was sending in for, because it was still under the one year manufacturer. So we got it in August of last year. So August would be the one year manufacturer that comes with every phone. It should, I mean, if it doesn't ask. Um, at least it does with Bell anyway. They have a one year manufacturer, but it has to be something that you did not do. I was still under that one year manufacturer warranty and I was having problems from like the get go. I had called back in January and the whole thing was like, well, you have to wipe your device and blah, blah. That experience wasn't necessarily that good. The, I had to go through like tech support and he made it kind of impossible because he wanted me to like wipe the phone like while he was waiting on hold <laughs> and trying to tell him you know I have to like sync this to my old phone because I don't lose my data that was frustrating however they still opened the ticket and I just never sent the phone in because I was like you know what it's not worth the hassle I'm just gonna not do anything. But then by like the beginning of May, mid-May, I realized that no longer, not only did I have like processor issues, uh, there was a screen problem, like it lagged from when I would touch, you know, think I'll try to type in something and then there's nothing and all of a sudden like 16 letters would show up. And there's also the fact that the imprint of this keyboard was burnt into the screen. So, if anybody out there is younger than like me, <laughs> so if you're younger than like 35, you probably don't understand what like burnt into a screen means. But a long time ago when our computer screens were the CRT things, those big hunk of things, there was a reason why screensavers exist. Now screensavers are kind of just there to look pretty because back then it was a projection and Long story short, you can burn the image into the screen. So if you always had it on like, you know, the hello or Windows 3.1 screen, because I'm going that far, um, it would burn the imprint in there. That happened on this phone, which is not supposed to happen on these LCD displays. So by then I was like, well, I may as well send it in. So I started vlogging it. I, I had to started going along with it. So. It was good. I mean, this account is, you know, my mom's account. And I've been lucky enough this whole time that I'm sharing the account with her. And I never had to pay for my cell phone. Um, that was something she did that was really nice. That's over. Other story. Um, but at the time, I was still on the account. So I was always the one that dealt with everything. And I don't know if it helped or not but our account that we've had we've had it for 18 years that's a really long time to have an account and because it was grandfathered 
because it was grandfathered in from Alliant to Bell Alliant to everything in the middle, we ended up being in a small business account because that's how they could only give you shared lines way back when. Again, and we just kept up with them. Um, the service over the years has not been bad. It, it's... I called, you know, and I was also the one that called. I'm the one that, that made all the deals and figured everything out and whatnot. Um, you know, now I have my own phone. I was told that I had to get my own, so I did. I went with Rogers. Not to be mean, I just didn't have a choice. Because, yes, there is a penalty that comes with this phone. Because it's the contract isn't up. However, I don't have credit. Right? We're all aware that, you know, um, unfortunately in disability, I had to declare bankruptcy. There was no way that I could keep a $37,000 car. I didn't have, I couldn't. So I have no credit. I don't have any credit. Therefore, I can't get this phone and this line transferred over to Bell and open a brand new account and not leave her with the penalty because I don't have credit. I can't open the account. Whether I want to or not, it's not going to happen. So I had to go with Rogers because, well, I have my home services with them and I've had my home services with them for like five years now, mostly because the building that I live in isn't wired for fiber. You can only get Rogers in this building. And we're not going to go into which company is better. Uh, I'm going to stick with the phone. So that's how I ended up getting, you know, another phone. That I had to get through Rogers because I wanted to keep my number. All my social media, everything that is linked to everything that I'm trying to do. Um, so far successfully, I hope it keeps going that way, is linked to my phone number. So I really need to keep it. Um, but the decision was made that I had to pay my own cell phone. I had to go that route. So now that that's out there, this phone's actually up for sale. You want it. And it's brand new. Now let me tell you why. Because again, we sent... The ticket open on May 20th and it took about a week and they were really helpful what they had to do was wait for the back office to close off the other order that had been opened in January and then send me the box for me to send the phone in and there was all these legal papers that I had to sign that said that you know um I'm okay if I lose any data and all that whatnot because they do have to reset it. However, I had already factory reset the S7 anyway. I moved everything over to the old S6 and whatever. Complicated, I know. And this time, it was easy to deal with them. Not that it wasn't in the past. Sometimes it is, you know, sometimes it just depends on the agent. And this time, it might have to do with me. I've done the DBT classes. I've learned so much on how to communicate, on how not to get mad, on all sorts of things, how to handle things. So maybe it was partly the fact that I'm better and not angry or whatnot. Either way, they did understand that I knew what I was talking about when I told them that, like, hey, electronics are my thing. So they did listen and they sent me the paper and they had all the things, there was a little square that said like all the things that were wrong. And I added in the part that the screen image was burnt in because that wasn't in there. But I hand wrote it in and signed it. And again, it just said that if I lose any data, I can't keep Bell, you know, responsible, which is fine. I knew that already. And it said that I had to, you know, if there was a PIN or a password, I had to provide what it was. But that wasn't the case because I had factory reset. Which is actually pretty easy to do if it made any question. So off it went. I had a, a Waybell number. Now, if anybody looks at the videos, because I might add them somewhere in here, because that was the day where I had to go out on my own, okay? That was when the whole fiasco happened, that no longer the support worker, everything's kind of, huh, gotta do everything on your own, and yeah, outside is hard, okay? I'm good in my apartment. I'm good at my job, because I'm used to it. The outside world is scary, super scary. It's called agoraphobia, but I'm working on it, okay? I vlogged my day out because I had to go mail it. The mail counter happens to be at the Sobeys up the road. It, it's really not that far. For me, it looks like whatever. 
it got done. I survived. I'm still here. All my body pieces are still attached. I'm good. Uh, it was a great experience. Do it again someday. Not right now. <laughs> it was tough. So, send that back in. I had a tracking number, which I was able to track. And also, Bell actually sent me emails. They sent me an email telling me that they had received it. And as per our conversation that I had with the agent, I'm not going to say her name, but I, I have her name here. And I think after this, I'm going to call Bell and, you know, give her kudos. Why not? I've, I've worked in call centers and sometimes it's great to hear that, you know, he helped someone instead of how it was being yelled at. So in our conversation, it came up the fact that some of these things that weren't working could possibly be deemed my fault. And if they have to fix them, sometimes they do, but then the bill, the charge for it automatically ends up on the bill. Now I had a problem with that already. If we weren't at the point where, you know, my mother said I had to pay for my own phone bill or whatnot, but I still respect the fact that this is my mom's account and it's her credit. So we had an agreement that they were not going to fix anything that needed money, that needed a charge before they were going to ask permission. For two reasons. One, I mean, again, it's my mom's account. It's up to her if she wants to pay that if she can or if she can't, you know? That's, I shouldn't, you know, I have the right to speak and make decisions, but I'm not a jerk. So, and the second thing is, is that if they tell me certain things are broken, maybe I can just fix them myself. Because I know how. Turned out, I didn't have to. They took care of everything. So this is the phone. I got it back. And it comes in this cute little package. I think it's great. What did they replace on it? They replaced the processor. Because there was a processor issue. They replaced the whole LCD screen and the home button. Because the home button kept sticking and whatnot. So they replaced all of that. Did it cost me anything? Nope. Nothing. The phone is here. It's in perfect working condition. And I think I haven't tried it to put a SIM card in it because, you know, it's for sale now because I have my own thing. But my whole point is that I dealt with Bell and this was what I was going to talk about was that was it going to be an easy thing to do? Was there going to be hoops to jump through? Was I going to have to prove that I didn't damage it myself or whatnot? No, none of that happened. Nothing. I told them what was wrong. They said, all right, you know, send it in. Now, the reason why they said send it in, however, it took a little bit of an explanation because we're in the Maritimes and we don't have actual Bell, Bell stores, like Bell Link stores. We have Bell Alliant and that's not the same thing because if it was an actual Bell Bell store, I could have just walked in with my phone, handed it to them and gotten a second, like, you know. So there was a little bit of hoops, but they weren't difficult to jump through. They worked with me, and I worked with them. So again, they sent me the box for me to send everything in. I didn't even pay shipping or anything. I signed all those papers, put the phone in, sent it in the mail, and not even a month later, I got the phone back completely fixed. No charge whatsoever, and that's it. So my conclusion, yes. My dealing with Bell over the fact that the phone that, you know, we purchased from them was defective. They fixed it for free and the whole process was less than painful. It was extremely easy, um, give or take. I mean, the beginning part, I mean, one of the technicians was a little bit snotty, but whatever, okay? There's like 4,000 employees. If three of them are mean, I ain't mad at that, all right? And even over the whole other years of the 18 years, again, I was always the one that would call in for, you know, billing mistakes. They weren't really mistakes, but whatever. Billing mistakes, um, data issues, and, you know, upgrades and whatnot. I was always the one that dealt with that. And over all those years, I mean, every once in a while, I did have to escalate to a supervisor. Only because... I knew I could get better. And did I work for Bell for a long time? Yes. 
Am I trained in loyalty in all four lines of business? Yes. So I did know that you could get more. That was a little bit of my thing. However, with an 18 year old account, they'll give you the moon and the stars. I mean, within parameters, but they'll bend over backwards and they did this whole time. So I wanna thank all of them. Thank everybody that was involved. It was a good experience to get the phone fixed. Overall of the whole time that we've been dealing with Bell, it was frustrating a little bit. Okay, we did have our, our things when it came to upgrading. But again, that just has to do with the fact that we're in the new, we're in New Brunswick where we don't have Bell Bell. We have Bell Alliant. So sometimes, you know, things kind of get. However, I do have to say the however. And this is really, really important to say that, yes, we did have really good customer service over the years because every time that we would upgrade and this upgrade was done with the phone, they actually mailed them to me and my mom in the mail. But every time before that, we always went to an actual Bell store to upgrade. Um, I would call, we get everything, you know, figured out, plan wise, phone wise over the phone, and then we'd show up to pick them up. And then that's where the problems always happen. And there was always like this $30 activation fee that doesn't need to be charged. That's just the store charging you this fee for their time and serve. I, I don't know. However, this is where I'm seeing me a good customer service because I would call them and be like, look, why would I have to pay for that? They would always credit us. The moral of the story is, yes, my experience with Bell was great. Am I sad I'm no longer a cell customer of Bell? Actually, yeah, I am. I, I really did like them. And more than that, we're not going to get into it because it's not the point. But the experience itself over the years was mostly positive. I mean, nothing's perfect, but for the most part, it was good. And would I recommend Bell? Yeah, I would. Definitely. Um, Promo jumping back and forth. Yeah, it can give you, you know, savings in the short term. But after 18 years of being with the same company, that's when they start really, really giving you awesome deals and awesome prices because they are rewarding you for, you know, being a long term customer for not creating, you know, a bunch of accounts back and forth and whatnot. So just because the grass looks a little bit greener on the other side, you know, if it's just like a $10 difference between two companies, like stick with the one you have. I mean, unless there's problems and you're not happy. But if you're mediocrely happy with your, your service and your provider, stay there. The longer you stay, the more they're going to give you. This is from, from, this is an insider tip, actually. I worked in loyalty. So when I wanted to give people credits because I have the right to, I would look, how long have they been a customer? Have they paid their bill on time every month? Do they complain all the time? Do they ask for credits all the time? If all those things weren't there, I'd give them one of the stars. Like, I had a lot of credit that I could give and some people got a lot. So, overall, the fixing the phone with Bell was a really, really good experience. Like five stars out of five. My overall experience with Bell for the past 18 years, I give it a four out of five stars. As for my experience with Rogers, I don't know. We're just starting on the cell phone journey with Rogers. I have my home phone, my home phone, you know, everything else with them. Maybe I'll get into that. I don't know. If you're interested in knowing what my experience with all that is, leave me a comment. Let me know because I'll tell it. I don't have a problem. It's not necessarily all bad. So that's it. I promised all of you that I would let you know if their journey was difficult or hard or what it was. It wasn't, it was easy, I recommend it. No hard feelings, I'm sad I'm gone, but life moves on, I gotta do what I can do. That's all I could afford. So, anybody looking for an S7? It's brand new, they just fixed it. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much, and have a great day.